by the end of this video, we're going to add an inventory to our game. We're going to have items that you can drag and drop to any other slot and also swap places with each other if you drag them on top of each other. This is the initial UI for our inventory, but we're going to be expanding on this in the next videos as well. Adding our inventory to our save state, adding hotbars and anything else inventory related I can think of. We're going to be using this menu I've created in a previous video. So you can follow that video, I'll link down below to get this bit set up. But if all you want is an inventory, all you need is a UI panel to work with. So cool, very exciting. Let's take a look. So I don't get confused. I've written out my little plan so we can follow along together. So first of all, let's make our slots. Now our slots, since they're in in the UI are actually UI elements. So if we open up UI and open up our menu and open up our pages, we can go to our inventory page and open this up too. And I'll right click and go UI image. I'm just going to call this slot. And on our image, I'm going to set our color to be a darker gray. So let's say I wanted lots of slots. I copy and paste another one. And if I double click on this, I can see this actually in my scene view. Now I've got two slots and what I'm going to like space them out individually like this, that would take forever. I ain't got time for that. I'm a developer. I got coding to do. Luckily, if we go to our inventory page, you can scroll down and add a new component called grid layout group. And I'm going to have to delete this title text that says inventory for now, just so we can sort our slots out first. You can see now if I copy and paste some slots, oh, they all line up next to each other. That's nice. They're a bit close. So let's click on our inventory page and open up the drop down for padding. I'm going to add a hundred in each of these, as well as a hundred in spacing on the X and Y. So if we now hold down control D on these slots and spam them out, whoa, that looks cool. It automatically spaces these out for us. Very nice. Next to make these interactable in our game, we're going to want to click on our slot and add a component called a canvas group. And you can leave the defaults for this, but basically it means it's interactable. So we'll be able to trigger clicks on our slot. And finally, we're going to add another component, go new script and call this slot and write our script for our slot. It's really short. Get ready. Okay. You ready for our short script? See if you can follow along. Okay. Public game object. Oh, I can't type fast and talk. <laughs> okay. Whatever. Current item semicolon. We're done. So for each of our slots, we're going to want to know the item that's currently held in this slot. So cool. That's the script. Close this down. And now we're going to delete all of our slots apart from the top one that we've worked on. Don't delete that one <laughs> and drag this slot into our assets to create a prefab. And we can delete this one in the hierarchy. And next up, let's take a look. We want a inventory controller. So our inventory controller is going to hold the data on our inventory details and also make the slots for us using the prefab. This can be so you can have expandable inventories over time. You know, maybe you want to upgrade your bags and make more slots. So I'm actually going to reuse our game controller object that has our save controller script and add a new script called inventory controller. Double click on this to open up and at the top, let's add our variable. So we're going to want a public game object for our inventory panel. So we know where to place our slots, public game object for our slot prefab, the one we just made. I'm going to set a public int for our slot count. This can be so you can upgrade your bags, like I said, and then we're also going to add a public game object, an array. So add the square brackets for item prefabs. So this is going to be a public array for now for testing. We're going to create some items and drag them into this array so they can be populated in our slots. And I don't have to show you all at once items being made and picked up and all that rubbish <laughs> all in one go. I'll do that in a bit. Don't worry. But cool. We're not going to need this update function. And in our start, we're going to initialize our slots and then add our items to it. So let's say four int i equals zero, i is less than slot count, and then i plus plus. Then we're going to go slot slot equals instantiate, pass in our slot prefab for the transform of the parent. We want it to be the inventory panel. So inventory panel dot transform. And then outside the brackets go dot get component. I'm grabbing the slot game object and storing it here so I can work with it and populate it with some items for us to test. If you just want to see the slots appearing, all you have to do is go instantiate the slot prefab and you'll be done. But otherwise, so let's say if I, so the slot that we're on is less than our item prefabs dot length. So the length of our array, do we have an item that can fit into this slot? And if we do, we'll go game object 
equals instantiate bracket item prefabs square brackets i comma slot dot transform because we want to put the item in the slot oh i just have game object game object item equals instantiate blah 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 cool and then with this item i'm going to go dot get component grab its rect transform and set its anchored position to equal vector two dot zero this anchored position set to zero make sure that our item is centered within the slot so no matter where we're going to place it it's going to snap to the middle and then we'll say slot dot current item equals item very cool that's it for our inventory script so we can close this down and if we click on our game controller we can see our inventory controller script we need our inventory panel which is on my inventory page object so i'm going to drag that over and then our slot prefab, which I'll drag from my assets and the slot count, we actually want 24 slots <laughs> and we'll add these item prefabs in a bit once we create them. But first let's press play, press tab. And on the side already, you can see all our slots created. If we click on our inventory, all these become active and you can see they're nicely spaced out. Cool. So now let's add some items to populate in this inventory. So I'll close this back down. And first off, we're going to be treating our items as images. In a future video, we're going to add in-game sprites. So they'll appear in our game and we'll be able to pick them up and they'll be added to the inventory. But for now, I'm going to reactivate our menu and inventory. Right click on our inventory page and go UI image. I'm just going to call this item. Right now our item is just a white blob. But let's grab an image for this. You can use any image you want, but if like me, you're following the tutorial with the Ninja Adventure Asset Pack, what we can do is go to Tile Sets and I'm gonna open up Tile Set House and you can actually use these Tile Set images for your items as well. Cause I know somewhere in here near the bottom, I think. Scroll, scroll, scroll. Here's a potion, there it is. Cool. I'm gonna just straight up drag that from the Tile Set and you'll see it disappears nicely in our inventory. We're going to want a canvas group. So if you click add component and add a canvas group, this makes this interactable. And then finally, to make this draggable, I'm gonna add a new script and call this item drag handler and double click on this to open it up. To be able to drag and drop, we're gonna use Unity's drag handler events. So after mono behavior at the top here, I'm gonna go comma, I begin drag handler. And with the red underline, let's go show potential fixes using Unity engine event system and continue as we also want I drag handler, then comma, I end drag handler. Now Unity does something cool for us here. It says, oh, it doesn't implement the interface on begin drag. So what you can do is say implement interface. Do this for all of them. So I drag handler, we need our on drag and then end drag handler on end drag. This automatically creates our functions for us. We're not gonna need our update, so let's get rid of that. And let's move, just because I like it to be consistent, our start to the top of the file, so it looks pretty cool. So let's begin with our variables at the top that we're gonna need. We're gonna want a transform original parent. So this will be the slot that the item's coming from. So if this gray box is our original parent and we drag our item off of this slot, maybe off the whole page and not into a new slot, what we're gonna do is snap it back from where we let go back to its original parent. So that's why we want this transform. And we're also gonna want a canvas group, which we'll just call canvas group. So cool, in our start, we're just gonna go canvas group equals get component canvas group. So this is the canvas group on our item. In on begin drag, we'll delete this throw exception and go original parent equals transform dot parent. So we're gonna save the OG parent in there. Then we're gonna go transform dot set parent and set this to be transform dot root. What this does is make sure it's above any other canvases. Then we're gonna to wanna to say canvas group dot block raycasts equals false. And then our canvas group dot alpha to equal 0.6. So the alpha is the transparency. So it's gonna go semi-transparent as we drag it. Now, while we drag it, we want the item to follow our mouse as we move. And to do this is really easy. All you have to do is go transform dot position equals event data dot position. So this will make it follow the mouse. And then on end drag, this is the big one. This is why I'm sighing. <laughs> so the basic stuff first, our canvas group dot block raycasts before we set it to false, let's set it back to true enables raycasts. So this means we can click on it again, canvas group dot alpha set back to one. So it's no longer transparent. Now we need to set up our slots. So moving from one slot to another. So let's go slot drop slot to be the one we're dropping it into equals event data dot pointer enter. So has our mouse entered a slot because we might not be in front of a slot. We need a question mark 
That means it's nullable if you put a question mark there. And then we'll go dot get component, pass in slot. So yep, that's the slot we're dropping the item in. And then we want another slot for our original slot. And we can just go original parent dot get component slot as we grabbed the original parent in the beginning. So first of all, let's go if drop slot does not equal null. We have ended our drag on top of a slot. Now the first thing we're going to code for is if let's say we've got two slots and we've got an item in each slot. I don't know what that is. Don't even worry about it. <laughs> let's say we drag this item into this slot. Well, there's an item already in there. So what we're going to need to do is put this one on hold, move this item into here and move this one to here. So you can do some item sorting and repositioning. So basically if there is an item, which we're about to check, swap these items around. So we want to say the drop slot we're dropping into, does it have a current item? So drop slot current item, not null then. So the one we're dropping it into, we'll go drop slot dot current item dot transform dot set parent to be the original slot dot transform our original slot dot current item will now equal our drop slot dot current item. So moved this item into here and that's where we're up to. Then we can set our drop slot dot current item dot get component and we need to get the rect transform again same as before and do anchored position equals vector two zero so this snaps into the middle then we're going to want an else so if there is no current item in our drop slot all we're going to want to do with our original slot dot current item is set this to be null and no matter if there is or isn't a current item in here what we're going to want to do is move our item into our drop slot since we moved this item over here we now need to move this one over here cool cool, cool. so let's go to transform dot set parent to drop slot dot transform and the drop slot dot current item to equal this game object. Cool. So that's everything that happens if there is a slot under where we drag to. Now we need an else for if there wasn't a slot. So there's no slot under our drop point. Then simply all we have to do is go transform dot set parent and send it flying on back to the original parent. And just to make sure everything's nice and tidy, we're going to go get component rect transform anchored position equals vector 2.0. So this centers it inside the slot. Okay, and that should be it. That wasn't too bad. Okay, we're good. Let's go back to Unity. And now we've got our items all set up. We can drag our item from the hierarchy into our assets, delete it from our hierarchy. And then in our game controller, we've got this slot for our item prefabs. I'll add just one of our items for now. Deactivate these back down. And just before I forget, if we click on our item, prefab. You need your pos z to be one, your width to be a hundred and your height to be a hundred, just to make sure this is visible in your game view. And this is the size of our slot. That's why I'm setting it to 100. Cool. Now, if I press play and press tab, I'll go to our inventory. No, item is not in the right place, but look how it drags and drops to the edge of our thing. <laughs> okay. I know the fix. Go on our slot. On your rect transform, you can see this weird little box that says bottom left. We're going to want to click on this and select center. So everything is stored in the center of our slot. And same as our slot, click on your item and we need to do that with our item as well. So it's set to bottom left. We want it on center middle. So click on here, one in the center. Cool. Press play, press tab. Go to our inventory, haha, -ha, right in the center. Nice. It's dragging to the slot I'm taking it to. And then if I drag it off our page, it snaps back to where it was. Cool. And real quick, I'm just going to drag our item into our scene and make another one by going to tile set, rolling down, grabbing our other potion bottle image. Very cute. I'll call this heart item and dragging this back into our assets to make a prefab variant. So a variant of our original item. We can delete this from the hierarchy. Go to our game controller tab and now I'll add another item and drag in our heart item into these item prefabs. I'll click play. Now if I press tab and go to our inventory, you can see our two items. Now I can test them swapping and they're not swapping. Okay, one second. Ha, huh. okay, I see. Brain activate. I did it. Okay, cool. So when we were dropping this, it was first ray casting onto our item that was below and we were trying to grab the slot straight from the item. We don't have a slot on our item, that's the parent. So in our script, I quickly just added this little section. So we do our drop slot. If our drop slot equals null, so we didn't find a slot there. We're going to see if we have an item here instead that we're dropping onto. So I grab the game object that we're dropping onto. And if the item is not null, we're going to grab the slot off of that item. 
So really I could call this drop item for better clarity. Cool, cool, cool. And now we've got our drop slot underneath that item we've dropped on top of. Sorry about the back and forth, I hate doing that. <laughs> this is an annoying script, so I'll put this up for free. I'll link it below, so you're welcome. But cool, now when we press play, press tab and go to our inventory, we can now move our items around and also drag them on top of each other and they'll swap places. Very cool. We're gonna continue working on our inventory in the next video, where we're gonna add saving our inventory state into our save system. Then we'll add our items to in-game, so our little frog will be able to see it in our game, walk over it, pick it up, and it'll appear in our inventory. Then I'm gonna add a hot bar so you can consume and use your items. There's so much we could do and so little time. If you also have so little time and you wanna save some time, you can grab my whole project for this on my Patreon, as well as every other video I've ever made for only five pound. Come on, that's really good, so cheap. But if not, I hope you enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe, thank you. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.